rain was a drizzle outside, slow and lazy like most of my cab drivers. It was the kind of rain that gave the impression that a storm was coming, but hadn't fully committed yet. It was late that I was stuck in my one-room office like gum sticks to the bottom of a shoe. It was irritating and it was going to take a lot of effort to dislodge me. I needed a new case. I needed a client to give me a detective case soon, or I would be spending my last paycheck on several new cases at the local liquor shop. Thankfully for my wallet and sobriety status, a knock at the door signaled the start to a new job. Come in. He entered then, a tall, thin young lad. One of those fellows that you could picture as running for home plate in one of the minor leagues. He shook a little bit of rain off his jacket before checking both his watch and the sign on the now open door. I didn't expect anyone to be open this late. You are the private eye? It's not officially office hours, and that would be private investigator. I hate the term private eye. He locked eyes with mine. He could tell he was working on the angle he was going to present to me. Whether that was the angle of his story or the angle his fist would meet me was a different question. He took slow steps toward me. I pulled my feet off my desk and pulled forward. What can I do for you? What are your rates? Ah, businessman, I presume. How about we discuss the nature of said business before we fix a price? After all, certain services cost more than others. He didn't say anything. Once again, he's thinking. And once again, I'm left to wonder if it's about the details of his job or the tactics for putting me out. Here, take a seat. Can I get you anything? No, thank you. I'd like to employ you to find out what happened to my car. Wait, wait, wait. Before you start making noises, you do know I'm not a mechanic. It disappeared a few days ago. A uh, missing vehicle. Common in this part of town where stealing a two-seater is considered a mark of status in the gang, not to mention the boost to ticket sales. Most of these, however, were handled by the local district. Not my kind of work. This evening, it start showed up again in my garage. So you want me to investigate your lost, but already found vehicle? What's the mystery? There's a dead body in the trunk. That one was a bit of a surprise. Thieves usually dump their spoils of war in the country when they suspect heat, so it was unusual that it was returned in the first place. But now they left their evidence of their activities in the vehicle they so politely returned. But, like a dog with a missing bone, I suspected I'd have to dig deeper. Do you have any clue as to how any of this happened? No. And I don't want any cops, so I came to you. It's all still there. It... Why don't you want any cops? That's not relevant. Great. Even more to hide in a deeper case. And he knew that, like a poor man sampling wine at a convention, I wasn't buying any of it. Listen, I don't want to keep it there any longer than I have to. If you can come over now and take a look, I'll pay you to find the guys who are dumping this load on me. Please! The questions were piling up like gravel piles in a quarry. What was he hiding from the cops? Why was his car returned? Why was it returned in his own garage? Why is he more concerned with finding the thieves than alerting the deceased? No matter my doubts, I knew there was solid work and it would pay. One way or another. Okay, I'll grab my stuff and meet you there. But you should be aware that the rate triples if you aren't going to play ball with the fuzz. Narrowing his eyebrows, he made his dissatisfaction clear. He may have figured out that by him telling me about his predicament, he had no choice but to pay the extra money. And then again, judging by his path of decisions that brought him here, he probably wasn't thinking that far ahead out of routine. <sighs> Fine. Here's the address. You had better get this job done right. I will deliver what I'm paid for. Put faith in that. He left quickly with a slam at the door. Other than my coat, I only needed two more pieces of equipment. I grabbed my 38 Colt and loaded it. I also grabbed a bottle of Old Forester whiskey and it loaded me. As I grabbed my coat, I stopped to look out the window. The rain had finally committed and a full downpour was underway. The storm had begun.